everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the dungeon. My name is Robin and this is Flameworking 101.43. In today's little episode, I am going to be making um, the reticello. The reticello is an Italian technique that is comprised of two roll-ups of cane on a collar or on a bubble in the hot shop. And so it's stand up glass blowing. Anyway, one cup is twisted and placed aside into a hot box and then you're going to blow another one out and twist it the opposite direction and then you're going to take that bubble still on the blowpipe and stuff it into the heated cup that you have sitting there. And that creates this beautiful, it's like cross hatching. And inside of each area where the canes cross over, there's a little tiny bubble. It's not an easy technique to do. It does take quite a bit of skill. Not something I'm really comfortable trying to even think about making on the torch. So I'll go ahead and <laughs> show you guys how to make one on a hollow bead instead. And this is just showing you the pattern. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoy this and I hope you're all doing well. And yeah, let's go ahead and make this. We'll see you guys next time in the dungeon. Okay, we're gonna start this out with a bit of encased white as a small stringer. And this is what I'm gonna use to draw the pattern on so the white does not bleed out. It'll keep a rather tight line when you use this. But this is important. I've tried it without and it just doesn't look as nice. Yeah, I tried it out. I must have made like seven of these <laughs> before I finally said, you know what, I need to move on. <laughs> so I hope you do get something um, of value out of this little video here. Okay, so I have my white all the way encased in clear. And when you're encasing it in the clear, be careful not to overheat the white. You just want to keep it nice and solid inside of that clear. And then you heat everything up. It took me a second to grab onto this. Forgive me, but I, I grabbed quite a bit. <laughs> anyway, I just take, take your time, pulling, especially pulling out the white. And this gave me plenty to make one bead with. If you're going to make more or you're going to do more, I suggest make many of these stringers. I'm going to start this bead out with a little bit of black. And I'm just going to kind of walk it maybe an inch or so down my mandrel. And knowing that I'm going to be using white lines on this, I'm thinking about the, the very edges of the bead. So I'm also going to add a little bit of white to both sides and I figured it will look good it you know it could look cool and it will help to hide the very ends of the white stringer anytime I'm working on a shape like this I always make sure that the sides are nice and crisp before I move on and then when I add this edge color things are much neater and then you can just roll it out and use that cooler side of the bead to guide your size as you roll it. Makes things just a little bit easier. Be careful not to get your um, bead release <laughs> all over the place, as I tend to do. Okay, now for the fun part. We are going to start building up this hollow bead on top of the base bead. And I'm just going to add a couple of wraps of clear, try to get them right on top of each other, especially for the first couple of wraps on both sides. And then once things start getting a little bigger, I don't know about you guys, but when I make these, I tend to kind of slightly overlap to one side or the other of the disc. Anyway, I'm going to continue to wrap that glass until I kind of feel like, you know what, that's getting a bit big. 
and I'm thinking I'm gonna heat these sides up and very gently smooth them out on the side of my marvering pad and that really helps because you can push very gently push the disc towards each other and then once you kind of have those angled towards each other you can start adding just one wrap to each side and gently continue to push the glass towards each other if you've never made a hollow bead this is a great way to start because you have something for it to hold on to while you're kind of working on these two sides and when I get really close I will give myself a much higher angle you can also use a handheld marvering pad to do this and then what I'm trying to do is get them to get to where they're touching and once they're touching I will add a little bit of glass to any open spaces that might be there and I did get this a little, uh, I think it's because I'm using so many short rods and they may not have all been clean, but there are some fuzzy areas in the clear. Okay, so it's all about the heat. When you go heat this up, it should be really nice and even heat and it should kind of puff up real nice. If it doesn't and it collapses, then you probably had like an air hole in there somewhere. All right, let's put the pattern on the reticello. So what I'm trying to do here is, you know, I just kind of figured I'd draw this, you know, curved line. And the more I, the more lines I did, the more I started to get a little confused. <laughs> so you can kind of see that they're not all perfect, but you know, that's just how it is sometimes. It still looks cool in the end. And that's why I decided to go ahead and put this video out here. <laughs> I just love to be able to see into that bubble. You can do, you know, you can even add patterns to the black area or that inside area, and that looks really cool too. Okay, now I am just getting about ready to do the opposite lines, but you see how I'm smoothing down those areas where the, uh, the lines were um, raised up a little bit. Okay, now, you know, what you really want to do here is pick a line and go from one line to another line and try not to go to the same line with two canes. <laughs> yep. What can you do? You move on. That's what you do. If you feel like you need to add another one, <laughs> add another one. <sighs> All right. There's our kind of reticello, our faked reticello right there. And because I, you know, I didn't want to go through the craziness of trying to add bubbles by indenting all of those little areas, I just went ahead and thought it'd be really cool to put a dot pattern in the middle of all these little spaces. And uh, it's looked, ended up looking like lattice work. So I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I'm gonna put all these little dots on here. I take my time, but as you can see, things are sped up because I know, um, you know, it's called short attention span theater. That's what I like to call it. That's what it is. <laughs> I can see the views of my videos of like how, how the length, <laughs> it cracks me up sometimes. <gasps> okay, so I'm gonna finish this off by taking those little dots all the way down to the edge of each side of the bead. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this and give the hollow bead a try. Heck, maybe try the reticello too. See you next time. <laughs>